Okay, good morning. We are in Stockholm, Sweden. We have four more full days here in Stockholm, and today we are starting with one of our little DIY food tours. If you saw our Athens DIY food tour, you know that we had such a blast. And while today won't be nearly as affordable as that one was, it should be just as delicious, and I'm really excited to try a bunch of different Swedish food. Okay guys, we took about a 30 minute walk from our Airbnb south. We left Gamlesan, we're on a new island, kind of near Soldermalm, but a little bit east. And we're at our very first stop for waffles. We are at the place, it's called, hold on, let me, Alscade Al Traditioner? Sure. It's the pink awning just behind me. It looks kind of like a cute little diner supposed to have excellent waffles. We've gone well out of our way just for these waffles, so let's go give them a try. Okay, so we have got our waffle with lingonberries, which is one of the traditional options. So as you can see, the difference between a Swedish and a Belgian waffle is the Swedish waffle is much thinner, and it's in this really cute sort of flower shape. So we're going to give it a taste. It's very crunchy. It's kind of like, like an ice cream cone waffle in the sense that it's very crunchy and sweet. I like it a lot. I'm gonna try it. Mm, the berries. I haven't actually had Lincoln berries yet. They're a bit tart, but good. I like them. That's all my main main taste is that they're a little bit tart, a little bit sour, but they're good. Okay, so Swedish waffles were delicious. They were thin and crispy. We didn't give a whole lot of description inside because it was very quiet in there, but I believe the one waffle was 750 USD, so plenty affordable. Lingonberries were really good. Jordan described them as a mix between a blueberry and a cherry, and I think that is spot on. Delicious. So anyway, it's time for our next stop, but we've gone south quite a bit, so it's about a 45 minute walk. So we thought, let's not walk, let's scooter. I've never scootered before, I'm a little nervous, but here we go. These things are a blast. They're so much fun. It's easy to get around too, like there's bike lanes everywhere, bus lanes, so it's really bike and scooter friendly. It's very difficult. I do not recommend trying to go pro yourself while you're scooting. <laughs> I like the no, roller blade here. Y'all saw that, right? Yeah. A person on like interesting inline blades with ski poles. I don't know if those poles are specifically for rollerblading or they're straight up ski poles. I was like, I thought that was Jordan. And I'm like, what is he doing back there? I honestly thought you fell. And I look back and there is a man with ski poles going down the bike lane. And I literally laughed out loud. It was so funny. <laughs> Very Nordic. Alright. We made it. I got this dab 
bad boy up to 20 kilometers per hour. It only got to 18 and a half without me using my legs, but I got an extra kilometer and a half per hour using my feet. <laughs> okay, we made it here in Ostermom and the Ostermom Salyut Hall. And if you hear the sound and what you've seen over there is the original 1800 style building, which the food hall or Salyut Hall was originally in. It's going through a lot of restoration and construction work right now. At first, we thought it was totally closed down, and then we looked right behind me and saw that they built a new building temporarily to house everything else. Thankfully, that's the case because most of our stops today for the food tour are in this value hall, so we're gonna go check that out now. Ostermom Salyu Hall, which is the food hall here in the Ostermom neighborhood, which is a super nice neighborhood. The Salyu Hall concept seems to be really popular throughout Sweden and Stockholm. Um, we've seen several of them where they just have all kinds of different restaurants and you can just sit down at, like, this is a nicer restaurant as part of it, but there's lots of to-go food as well. So we've ordered a couple of dishes of traditional Swedish food. I have in front of me a selection of three different types of pairing. And then Jordan has a marinated salmon dish called Rob Fox, I believe. So we're gonna give them both a try and see what we think. This one seems to just smell like fish with mayo. I put it on a little cracker. Here we go. It's not mayo, it tastes like it tastes like miracle whip. Have you ever had that? Kinda it just has like a a zesty mayonnaise flavor. I definitely recommend taking a smaller bite of fish, it was a lot. But it was good, it wasn't like weird. Not that we expected it to be that. I'm, I'm surprised. It's really good with the cracker because the fish itself is quite soft, kind of smushy. We want to try it. Okay. All right, here we go. So the fish is good. The herring is really good, soft, flavorful, not too fishy. It actually tastes like a honey mustard sauce, which is good. a little too sweet for my taste, but I, I mean it's good overall. Cracker's good. Also, I think herring's a thing because you can catch it mostly here in the waters, and I think they've been like preserving and curing uh, the herring since like the Viking era, which is why it's such a popular Swedish dish. But it's good. I'm really excited to try the gravel walks, the salmon, because I love salmon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna try the gravel box now, which is the dill cured salmon. It looks really good, like really quality salmon. So let's give it a try. Okay, it's really good. It's just simple ingredients, high quality fish. It's salmon that's cured with dill and toast. No sauces, it's delicious, I love it. All right, going for my uh, second pairing here. This one has like chives on it, I don't know. It's okay. Okay, I've decided all of these have like a mayonnaise-based sauce to it or something, and I'm not a fan of that. I think it's like the herring by itself. Okay, so we found the potato pancakes. I believe they're called Ragmunk, R-A-G-G-M-U-N-K. And they are just some like shredded potato and they fry it in butter. It's usually served with pork and lingon berries, but we just got it without the meat because we didn't need any more. It looks so good. It reminds me a lot of the German kartoffel puffer or the Polish potato pancake. There's lots of cultures that have a similar thing and I love all of them. It's essentially a hash brown. So, let's see it.
it's really yummy. It's like a thin, sort of soft hash brown. The lemon berries make it super tart. It's very good. All right, so we wanted to take a quiet moment and sort of give a rundown of what we thought of all the different foods we've eaten so far. We still have a couple more yet, but it was busy and kind of noisy inside the food hall, which is fine. Just a little weird for filming. Y'all, at one point while I was talking to you, a couple of tourists, I'm assuming, because I don't think a Swedish person did this, walked straight up. I'm talking here and they just stopped and watched and nodded as I talked and I just was like, I'm gonna keep going. And then as soon as we were done, I looked over at them and he goes, and walked off. I really think he, I was, does he think I'm doing the news or something? It was weird. Anyway, okay. So a rundown of what we ate and what we thought. The first place we went, the Lisa Elmquist, it was kind of a nicer restaurant. They have some takeaway, but we sat down in the main restaurant part and we ordered a platter of herring. I had three types of herring and then we ordered the Gravlax, which is a cured salmon. They cure it in a dill and lemon sort of mixture. I did not expect to like herring at all. Like I thought I would be honestly grossed out by it. And maybe it's because we had it at a nicer place, but I thought it was fine. There were two out of the three that were really heavily sauced and I don't need that much sauce. So I kind of just like undid it a little, but the flavors were good. The fish was good. There was one that was like not sauced and it came with red onion and that was actually like delicious and I ate the whole thing of that. The other two were fine. And then I don't think Jordan was particularly impressed by any of them, but that's okay. The next was the salmon. It was very much like having a huge thing of sushi as far as texture and sometimes that can get a little tiresome, like it's just a lot of the same kind of squishy texture but we were served these sort of heavy duty rye crackers and I personally felt like if you put a little piece of that on a cracker, it was a really nice balance. I think Jordan got tired of the texture after a while, but the flavor was so nice. I mean, dill and salmon is classic, it's always good. So that was our thoughts on that. And then the last thing in the salad hall that we tried was the ragmunk. Um, I'm saying that pretty correctly because I heard a Swedish person order it next to me, but it is the potato pancakes. It's traditionally served alongside pork with lingonberries and it's a whole platter. We just got the own, just the pancake itself and it was really yummy. They were reheated because I think maybe they're meant to be taken to go. And I think a fresh one would be way, way better and like crispier, but I thought it was delicious. It's savory, it's buttery and yummy and who doesn't like potatoes? Some people, I guess, but they're wrong. I loved it, I thought it was great. But I also really love potato pancakes of all varieties. Like I mentioned before, Polish, German, there's lots of different kinds. I like Korean. them. Korean, those are good. They have scallions and seafood, yum. Okay, I'm rambling now, but it is time to go Bika. We are gonna go find a bakery and get some cinnamon buns and some coffee and take a break and do as the Swedish do. It's a bakery for Fika, as I mentioned. It's just coffee break. We're gonna take a time during the day to have coffee and a treat and just enjoy the moment. But we have two other things that sort of tick off things on our DIY food tour. One being cinnamon buns. These buns in particular, they're really famous everywhere. This bakery is supposed to make excellent ones. It's like a twisty, beautiful cinnamon bun with like crunchy, sugary stuff on top. It looks so good, it smells so good. And then one other thing is coffee. Swedes love coffee, but specifically oat milk. Oat milk, the, the brand Oatly at least, was made here in Sweden and it still is. And it's everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's oat milk. It seems to be very common. So it feels like a little extra Swedish touch. We put a little oat milk in our coffee. Jordan and I happen to buy Oatly at home all the time. We love it. But all together, we're just gonna have 
a little Fika moment. Yo, these buns are so good. Like, so good. They're delicious. They are cinnamony, but they have extra layers. Like, I think there's some clove in there. Maybe some kind of citrus zest. It's got a brighter note. It is so yummy. They're gooey on the inside, which I didn't expect. I kind of thought they might be like more dry. They're not. Oh, they're so good. We wrapped up our Fika time and these Cinnabons were so good, so delicious. There's this warm, soft, ooey gooey and the coffee with oat milk was just so tasty. Loved it. Now yeah, we made I our way that. back I towards our that. Airbnb where coffee. we're going to go and cook our last meal of the day, uh, which you'll find out in just a second. But first, we're going to make a quick little pit stop. So our pit stop is Cafe Schweizer. We needed to say hello to some friends in a way. We were doing research on Stockholm and anytime we're doing research on a place, we always check out our friend Kara and Nate's YouTube channel. They're extremely popular, definitely check them out. But they were in Stockholm, I believe last year, and they fika here in this cafe and left their little mark on the door frame. And we just wanted to come say hello. It turns out it's right around the corner from where we're staying. So hey guys, thanks for all your suggestions. Well, good evening. We wanted to round out the day with one last Swedish dish. Yeah, we're probably wondering this all day. Where are the meatballs? And they're here. Don't worry. We're having them. We thought about going to get them out. We thought about what kind of meatballs we want to eat. We eat a lot of pescatarian, vegetarian food. Did we even want meatballs? We solved it. Judge us if you want without vegetarian Swedish meatballs. So, the traditional plate is meatballs, mashed potatoes, lingonberries, and cucumbers. And we have at least half of that. We have mashed potatoes and the meatballs. I really wish we had some lingonberries. Turns out, I really like them. But, that's okay. We're going to make the mashed potatoes with oat milk. Extra Swedish. And we have a little gravy. I would normally never buy packet gravy, but this was all we had. I have no idea how to make the gravy that goes on them. So, we're going to give that a go. And I think it should be pretty yummy. We have water boiling to get the potatoes going here in a second. These just pop in the oven. This is just on a saucepan and then it's all gonna come together pretty easily. And then we'll check back in when I'm all done and see how it tastes. I gave it my best shot. We don't have the entire plate that's traditional. We're missing the lingonberries and the little cucumber side dish, which I do think looking at this would add a really nice acidic sour element, but that's okay. We're doing the best of what we have. We have meatballs and gravy and mashed potatoes. Again, we're working with the Airbnb kitchen, so the mashed potatoes aren't as like smooth and creamy as I've seen them most everywhere when I see this dish, but I think it's gonna be really good and I'm ready to give it a try. Here we go. <laughs> Smells good. First off, those meatballs taste, they're vegetarian, but they taste quite meaty. I don't know what's in them. Could be the gravy making it taste meaty. I don't know, but it's good. I like it. I'm really interested to see what you think, Jordan. Let's see. Hmm. Smell of the day. Here we go. Smells good. Mm. That's good. This is by far my favorite thing I've had all day. And I'm not just saying that because I actually cooked it. It really is delicious. 
Damn potatoes. <laughs> what you doing? You know, doing dishes. It's a rule in the Garrett household. He who does not cook does dishes. So I'm doing dishes. Yes, he cook. Anywho, I'm gonna finish dishes and then we're gonna get some rest for the night. And tomorrow, we'll see y'all for some underground art in Stockholm. <laughs> Everywhere. The cinnamon buns were... Sorry. The cinnamon buns were so 